Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to Monday Night Live. I have an announcement to make. Hopefully you're watching, but that's not the announcement. Hi, it's Yvonne here from Women's Fitness Adventures. So nice to be back for Monday Night Live. As you can see, I'm still in my hiking gear. I haven't changed for today. I haven't uh, had an opportunity. I had a busy, busy afternoon, uh, but it, delighted to be here with you um, this afternoon. So for those of you who don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Yvonne Shepherd. I am uh, the founder and CEO of Women's Fitness Adventures. Now happily completed our ninth year and looking forward uh, to the rest of the year where we will celebrate our 10 year anniversary next year, which is pretty amazing, uh, pretty exciting. And who would have thought that uh, nine years ago this May, uh, so this month, uh, when Women's Fitness Adventures first started, that uh, you know, coming up nine years, almost 10 years, that we would be the amazing community uh, of uh, adventure ready women that we are today. And that is part of my story today. So I have a good story for you today that weaves its way in and out. It's probably going to be a bit like Billy Connolly, where bits and pieces will all eventually string together. So bear with me. Um, but uh, very excited to share some things with you. So hello, Karen. Uh, hello, Marianne. Looking forward to catching up with you in a couple of weeks on our Great Ocean Road hike. Uh, and hello, Sandra. Yes, wow, nine years. Hard to believe, isn't it? But, you know, that showing up, I think I've been showing up one night a week every every week for probably seven of those nine years. Uh, and it shows, you probably all know where I'm going with this, it shows the power of consistency. And I have a fabulous story to tell um, about the power of consistency. And I'm also going to address my most frequently asked question this week, um, which is, am I fit enough? And I get this all the time, but the questions this week were really relevant and I would like to bring those um, up again today. And it doesn't matter how many times we've hiked or how many trails of the world we've done, whether they're easy or um, you know, challenging, there is still that question that goes into our head of, Am I going to be fit enough? What if I can't keep up? What if I don't last? What if I fail? What if everyone laughs at me? All of those questions. So I'm going to readdress those today. Um, but if you are watching live, please let me know. I can see uh, some lovely members have popped in there. Hello, Ellen. Um, and hello, Alethea as well. So we're from all over the uh, country at the moment or east coast of Australia uh, at the moment. So if you're watching live, uh, please pop in there where you're watching from. I can't see you. Um, I don't even know who you are. So we put your name in there. Hello, Marie at Noosa. And hello, Robin. Haven't seen you in a little while. So lovely to have you back here as well. Um, and if you are watching on replay, then please let us know that you're watching on the replay. But tonight, to get started, I have a story. Now, some of you may know that way back in 2020, I would sit here at my desk. I'm in a different spot to do lives, but my desk looks out over my street and there's all these townhouses across the road. And I get to see the comings and goings because the main driveway is out my window. And during those, uh, you know, pandemic times, um, oh, hi, Mandy, tuning in from Croatia. Lovely to um, have you listening in. So during the, the very first start of COVID, uh, you know, in fact, three years ago today, we're in Brisbane where I am, we're in a lockdown um, or, or very close to uh, it, because it was my husband's birthday yesterday. And I remember three years ago, his work, people had to do a drive-by. We mustn't have been quite locked down and they had to have, have a function in the park and there could only be 10 of them. And, you know, so remember those dark days. Uh, they are hopefully behind us uh, forever. Um, and hello, Robin, glad to know you're in Brisbane. And hello, Christine from um, Cleveland. And another one in Croatia, Dubrovnik this time. Hello, girls. Lovely to have you here. Um, so anyway, I would sit at my desk and I would look out the window and I could see everything. I could see the couriers. I could see how much Amazon was delivering. It was quite amazing. There's a lot of units there and it's a very busy street. But um, every day I would see this man walk past. He walked past in the morning because I live on the top of a hill, so it's great hill training. Across the top is where I live, and then you go down the hill, across the bottom, and then come back up again. And every morning I'd see this man go across the, you know, the front of the driveway, and he'd do this for about 30 minutes, this block. And um, then every afternoon he would do the same thing. And his, I call him Mike. Uh, some of you know the story of Mike because Mike, he was always on the phone. 
Uh, so I assumed he was having meetings and stuff and he had these wraparound, and if Mike, if you're watching, hello, I had these wraparound um, reflective sunglasses. And when it's hot here in Brisbane, he was wearing a singlet and then in winter he kind of, well, he disappeared for a little bit in winter and then he'd come back for spring. So anyway, I watched Mike for all those times and it's a little bit creepy, I know, and I could literally see Mike's shape changing right in front of me and literally right in front of me out the window. And I had spoken to a few of our members about this on some of our uh, online social walks and stuff, and some of you have said you should go tell him that. Anyway, um, Mike disappeared for a while, and a couple of months ago Mike reappeared. And I would see him and go, oh, Mike's back. But he's changed his circuit a little. But he's still looking great. Mike would be maybe in his 40s. Um, so anyway, the other day I was out for a walk and I happened to see Mike and I just, you know, plucked up some courage and I waved at him and I walked over to him and he's probably scared to death at this point. And he, I said, hi, and he took his ear things out. I said, hi, you don't know me. I just live over there. I said, can I just say to you that this is going to sound really, really creepy that I have been watching you for years. I sit at my desk. I watch, have watched you walk past. I've spoken to, you know, friends about you because I find that what you, what you are doing, not you in particular, but what you are doing is very, very inspiring because what you have done is you have shown up with consistency. And, um, I said, and I've noticed the change in you. I said, and I've called you Mike. And he's laughing, looking, going, "Who is this crazy woman? So anyway, I, um, he said, well, he took his glasses off at this point and he said, well, my name's Aaron. It's not Mike. I said, oh, nice to meet you. I'm Yvonne. And I said, you know, you're really inspiring. He said, I've lost 10 kilos. He said, what I found was I came back from overseas as COVID was beginning. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Um, and I didn't like the way I had become, who I was. Uh, so I decided to do something about it and I started walking. He said, but then I stopped for winter and he said, and then it kind of wasn't working for me. So, and he went away and then he said, I came back and I started again. He said, but you know what the most important thing is, Evelyn? He said, not only am I showing up all the time, he said, it's the hills. The hills have made all the difference to me and I feel great. And I said, well, without being creepy, Mike, I still can't call him Aaron. Mike, I think you look great. I think you're really inspiring because to me, the showing up with consistency is the key to everything and keep it up. And I was telling my family and, and friends and they said, yeah, it's a little bit creepy, but boy, did that make his day. He is like, he, I have seen him all the time, not literally just walking in front of my house, but, you know, sometimes we see people do things and we don't give them enough um, credit for how inspiring they are to us. We we only tell them, we, we don't tell them and they may never know. And I think we're all unknowingly inspiring. I say that quite often. But, um, you know, if someone inspires you in some way or someone's behaviour leads you to change your behaviour to do something uh, better or different or um, that works well for you, then it's worth telling them that, especially if you have access to tell them that or shout it out to to someone because that um, his consistency uh, paid off. And that's what I say to anyone who will listen uh, about hiking fitness. And that question, which is, am I fit enough for, for a hike? How would I hike, you know, several days in a row? Uh, what happens if I fall behind, if I fail? And, and you know, we were talking about this today and um, someone asked me, do we not let people come on our adventures because of their fitness levels? And I said, no, no, that is not what we do um, because I believe, and if you are a member, you've received the newsletter and if you're not a member, you'll get one very soon, um, that, you know, we can all do whatever it is we choose to do. And, and Mike is evidence of that. You know, he chose to move from a situation where he wasn't comfortable within himself, put himself out there by doing his movement daily and, and landed himself in a different position. And 
you know, the, the voices in our head. So I can help you. We at Women's Fitness Adventures can help you for whatever adventure you're going on, whether you're going on one of ours um, and, hey, weren't those pictures of Croatia pretty awesome or whether you are, um, you know, have an adventure or a hike of your own planned, we can help you with the training plans, with the hiking fitness, with the hiking skills. But what we can't do is help you with this conversation that happens inside your head. But here's the thing. Here's what I know. I know for me many, many years ago when I started running and hiking and, and women's fitness adventures, you know, I had so many what-if questions. So what if this doesn't work? What if no one shows up? Believe it, I was terrified. What if no one shows up? Um, what if people don't like the idea? What if I fail? All of those questions I had. And you can translate this across to anything that you want. Um, but at some point I had to get over it in my head. And the way I got over it is I kept showing up. And it's like flexing a muscle. So as we train, whatever fitness level we're at, and one of the things is that fitness is a journey and fitness, particularly hiking fitness, takes time. We can't go too far too fast because we don't want to fatigue and injure the body. But we also want to make sure that um, we're doing it for us. We're not comparing ourselves to others. I can see seven angry faces on the emojis. I hope I haven't angered anyone. Um, and um, so what I've found is that as we start to get fitter from whatever base and stronger from whatever base we're on, we get more confidence within ourselves. And, and the, the fitter and stronger that we get, the more those voices and, and of self-talk and negativeness um, go away. So it becomes this, this little ecosystem in itself because um, we can go on a hike one day or do some training one day and it may not go to plan and then we can come home and either go, well, here's a learning experience or I sucked at that, I failed at that and you go down a spiral. So it's really important to, um, you know, get inside your own head and just swim your own race and flex your fitness muscle from consistently showing up. Be like Mike. I think that was a movie, wasn't it? Be like Mike or a song. Um, but the other thing is to help, um, you know, the questions today were, well, I really want, would want to do something but I'm scared or it's too soon or it's this or it's that, is that um, I, I also know that making like, a lot of those questions are answered way back way back way back when um and i know a lot of you as members know this that um it's choosing the right one for you that is right for your physical capability but it excites you and it gives you that little bit of a butterfly oh can i um or even that stretch goal that it's like really could i could i if i trained because the training is the simple bit. It's this bit here. If you're excited and you're committed and you show up with consistency with training and get the right training plan and the right support, then you can literally do any hike in the world. I'm testament to that. I have taught myself how to do this and kept putting out those stretch goals there. And sure, I have times of self-doubt, but I've found that the fitter I get, the more confident I get and the more confident I get, the more that, that the voice or the things that sit on your shoulder go away. So um, I, I, that's the only thing I can, can't answer for you is how I can tell you you're fit enough. I can give you all the plans and everything like that, but I can't make that go away for you. You're the only person who can do that. So let me check in on some comments. Comments, hi, Eileen from Manly. Uh, Sandra says, I think you do help with the self-talk. Sometimes I hear you countering my negative self-talk. Thank you. Oh, I seem to get in everyone's head. Um, hi, Margaret from Caloundra. It would be beautiful with all this bushfire smoke at the time. Sandra, so there's some silly emojis. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so Lethia's voice always says a hiker's mindset. Yep. And we will have doubts and, you know, we can be in a, in a group and waiting to cross a bridge or a creek or something and, not being able to see what happens and starting to panic going, can I do this? Can I not do this? And then when you actually get to it, it's not as hard as you think. And trust me, it is nothing is as hard as you think. Um, all right. 
Margaret hit the emoji <laughs> on a walk by accident. <laughs> That's okay. Honesty is the best form of fitness. Look at my hair. It's a mess. Um, thank you, Margaret. Um, and Sandra says, just show up. Consistency, consistency, and no sorries. Absolutely. So um, self-talk is really common, though, and it it can take away that clarity of thought. So I really challenge you to, you know, push the, the negative ones away because they're not real. They're just a thought that you're having about some future event. So what's real is what you're doing right now. And I was chatting with one of our members today who's booked on our Kangaroo Island adventure. She's got her training plan. It's in September. She's laid it out on the table. She's mapped out her diary. And I know that she will get there and blitz that adventure. And the key is that, um, you know, as women's fitness adventures, we're a team. You might start off as the individual, I'm on that adventure. But by the time the adventure comes, you're a team. So every member of the team um, if every member of the team trains to their ability and takes the training and the adventure, that investment seriously, then they're going to have a just a, a marvelous time on that adventure. Because you know, if you if you drag the chain with your fitness, you're just dragging yourself to to camp or hotel every night. Um, and as I said, fitness is a journey; it takes time. Look at Mike. Be like Mike. Think about Mike. If you take one thing away from tonight, Mike, and his consistency, he's showing up. And over time, he has literally changed his shape. He's shedded 10 kilos. He's got a whole lot done with work through through walking and talking, um, but he's in this great mindset because he's showing up, just reinforced that he was doing the right thing. Um, the other thing that can contribute to our self-talk is that we just think of that end goal in sight, that end, end goal. I've got to walk, you know, where are we going? Pyrenees. I've got to walk, you know, it, it's altitude every day. Um, where and how am I ever going to do that by September? But the key to that is thinking, okay, this week I just need to do this. And then when you get to the end of this week, celebrate that. Hey, I did this because last week I couldn't do that at all. Or two months ago, I couldn't walk more than five kilometres. So those little achievements will start that beautiful ecosystem happening again and again and again. Um, the other thing is, you know, and we're often asked this as well, is do I have to replicate an adventure before I go on it? So if it's five days, do I have to hike five days in a row of 15 kilometres a day uh, before I feel confident that I can do it? The answer is no. Um, you just break it all down into manageable steps. The keys, as we always say, are endurance, time on our legs, right? So 15 kilometres can take you three hours or it can take you 10 hours, depending what you're seeing and doing along the way. And as we said today uh, in our hike about this morning, that <clears throat> hike about is hike training. But when we're on an adventure, we might do 10 kilometres across a whole day. So we're longer on our feet, so we need endurance, but we may not be as intense as we are during our training. So, you know, elongate some of the things and think about how, um, how training translates into actually being there because you've got beautiful scenery and food and, you know, wherever you're going, whether it's a day hike in, you know, I know one of our members, she's not on tonight, but in Launceston, there is such beautiful hikes around her and the hiking and scenery that you do is a really welcome distraction from that negative self-talk. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, the, the conversations, that negative self-talk about am I fit enough to book into one, it just can be anything in your life. Find, find things that are contrary to that. What have I done before that I had the same conversations around that I can do now, not necessarily relating to hiking adventures. Um, and the other thing is just to visualise yourself on the trail, surround yourself. And I learnt this um, in a conference I was on in the last couple of days. They said surround yourself with the G8 um, and the group of eight is those people that um, in a business sense were, you know, accountants and lawyers and dreamers and blah, 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 but uh, in in a hiking sense, I say the five, uh, surround yourself with, you know, the famous five, the five people that will encourage you to keep going. So if you have people, and I've said this before, if you have people that sit on the couch 
that aren't interested, and that's fine, and aren't interested in outdoor adventures, aren't interested in hiking, in, in seeing places in your own backyard or further away, then they don't, they don't and they won't understand what this means to you. And so when you seek advice from them or you voice a concern or a delight, then the response that you're getting isn't necessarily going to be the same from someone who actually enjoys all of those things. So seek out those people that are going to support you on the journey, not just throw in little snippets of helpful or sometimes unhelpful uh, pieces of information. And we were talking about this um, just the other day as well. Um, you know, would you take business advice from um, someone who wasn't in business? Would you take um, book recommendations from someone who never reads books? I can see those angry emojis are getting more, oh, press the wrong button. Um, the other thing is that, um, you know, accountability is key and it's easy to get stuck in our own little world and um, think that, you know, oh, I can't do this, woe is me. But when you surround yourself with the right type of community, you can actually do anything. And I have learnt um, our Couch to Mountain program um, that that is teamwork on, you know, up in the skies because everyone is coming from the same place and everyone is there to support each other and make positive change. And that group shows up with consistency and whilst their journey starts now uh, and their summit is Mount Kosciuszko in December, hence the couch to the mountain, they are not getting overwhelmed. They are we have broken it down and it's step by step and it is celebrating those achievements. And by the time we get to maybe two or three months down the track, the jargon, the lingo, the confidence and the excitement will outweigh, sure there'll still be some doubt, but it will outweigh the doubt and the negative self-talk. So I think that's really important. Um, and, yeah, just to just share those experiences that you're not alone. And when we were having these conversations this morning about I'd like to book into something but um, the other people that were near me having the conversation were, yeah, I feel the same. I feel absolutely the same. So I think it's really important um, to know that that negative self-talk isn't just yours. It seems to be a universal thing that snuck into all of us. Uh, you know, even, um, you know, some very high profile people say that they have negative self-talk. So it's not alone, but it's, um, you know, I'm reading the, I today started our first um, chapter for book club and which is on next Tuesday, Adventurous Spirit by Heather Hawkins. And um, she said, the one thing we all have in common is life, which we all do, love of life. Um, but, you know, it's out there to be, to be um, enjoyed and taken and, and just, you know, the joy begins uh, when we make that commitment to doing something that just takes us out of our comfort zone as well. So that question of am I, will I be fit enough? Yes, I believe everyone can be. Um, the question is do you? Um, but the key to it is to show up with consistency. Absolutely. Show up in your own life to do movement, uh, so cardio, strength and endurance uh, to do that and uh, you can move towards whatever adventure you want to. Now I think you're all messing with my head with those 10 now angry emojis. Um, so I'm going to check in over here. I need some, some more love, not 10 angry emojis. Um, so Meg says hi from Melbourne, joining a bit late. Hi, Meg. Um, and hi, Heather from Melbourne as well. Um, Marianne says, Couch to Mountain is the best thing I've ever done, giving me so much confidence and love of hiking. Thank you for sharing that, Marianne. And I do know that, um, you know, the the couch to mountain uh, participants well actually you know majority of um, the women who come on our adventures are uh, will keep propelling themselves to other adventures and keep extending their skills and keep extending their joy and love of the outdoors and that is just a beautiful gift just a beautiful gift you can give to yourself um 
Alethea says, good to hear. I am doing it now. I hope that's the love button, not the angry emojis. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and Suze is sending good wishes, not angry emojis from Adelaide. So I'm hoping that sometimes that button just gets a little bit crazy and you end up pressing the wrong one. So I'm hoping that's what ha has happened. And Margaret, if it's you from Cairns, hopefully not pressing that uh, by accident 10 times. Um, so that is the, the big question of this week. And I really encourage you to be like Mike. Um, so if you missed that, if you came in late, just jump back to the beginning um, of the story and be like Mike or Aaron as it is and that consistency of showing up, showing up in your hiking life if that's the thing you want to do. And if you have a big adventure out there that you are planning and um, want a little bit more help with, then you can um, uh, uh, jump onto our adventure ready for hiking course our early bird ends in the next couple of days early bird pricing but it's a 10-week online uh curated highly curated um program that takes you from beginning to end so if you've got an adventure out there i know one of the the ladies who has booked on that uh is is not a member of our community which is great because this is not just for members and is doing an adventure in western australia in august so this program is perfect for her to get herself adventure ready within a short space of time so we help you build your hiking plan or if you're wanting more accountability uh, and more detailed questions so let me just come back to the comments no it's not you margaret okay well that's a good thing um the other thing i wanted to talk about is if you are a member if you're not a member then you can um, join our community uh, just visit our website or follow this link i'll just pop the link up um where is it here uh i think it's that one um is we just on tuesday monday monday we will be starting a new member challenge for 21 days for um june so the challenge is called plus two so what we would like you to do is add two so if you are currently walking two kilometres, then add two. So it doesn't mean you have to add two kilometres, but you can just add to that. If you are currently, you know, doing Pilates once a week, then add to that with something else. So it's an add to. We have, um, you'll have a tracker and all that coming out this week. And we have some fantastic um, prizes uh, for our members as well for sharing. So um just check out the newsletter and you'll get some more details coming through this week. So you don't need anything special. It, you, you don't need any fancy equipment. You can do it from wherever you live. Um, it's just adding to, uh, and the goal is we keep moving through winter. If we start the month of June, first month of uh, winter off it, with a great start and build some habits for 21 days, then they should hold us through till the, till the warm weather comes again in September. Um, so, let me check in on the comments. Um, yes, it starts soon, Suze, uh, Couch Mountain. Uh, and a walking challenge sounds great. It is great because it holds you accountable. So um, that is it. So that's it for me from tonight. Lots of great things happening. Uh, we have a date claimer coming up soon. Uh, I won't give you the date yet because I just have to make sure we hit the hit all the uh, things we need to do uh, where we will be unveiling our 2024 adventures. So keep an eye out on the website uh, for expressions of interest for things, but we will be having a night online where we talk about all the adventures for uh, next year and lots of new ones for Australia, lots of different little things because it's our 10th year next year and some uh, great adventures for uh, overseas as well. So look out for those, but lots of, lots of things that uh, you might not expect for next year as well. It is exciting, Meg. It is very exciting. I'm looking forward to it, but there's lots to look forward to now. How good has the picture, have the pictures been from Croatia? Our girls were hiking and cruising, or our, our ladies, uh, in Croatia, hiking with cruising yep and had the most fabulous time and did you not love the purple the purple towels the purple women's fitness adventures beach towels um maybe heather you'll have to wait um and the uh a big shout out to our team heading off to uh the cinque terra in in um 
Italy on Friday, they head off. This will be our fifth time to visit the Cinque Terre. And um, it, we are very excited because our last trip there was in 2019. And, and they're like family to us. We stay in the same place. We have the same guides. And it's really just such a delightful adventure. So big shout out to anyone heading off to Cinque Terre on Friday. Um, yes, Suze, it's a member challenge. So um, you're part of the, the Women's Fitness Adventures community. All our challenges are included in membership. So it's a great way to really um, keep that momentum, build some great habits and um, boost the fitness at the same time. So all the details will come out this week. Um, and, yeah, okay, so I gather that no one's intentionally doing those anger emojis, but that's okay. Or maybe it's just a furrowed brow um, and that's okay too. Okay, so that's it from me. Um, I have loved having you here tonight. If you have any questions later on, just pop them in the chat here. Uh, or you can send us a message or email us. Um, that's it from me. If you have any things you would like discussed um, for next week, please let me know. But remember, be like Mike. Show up with consistency and eventually those negative uh, self-talk of will I be able to do it, will I be fit enough, um, will fade away. So thank you so much and I look forward to catching up with you next time. Bye. <laughs>